stories are waiting out there. What new adventures can we see? What are the answers to the never-ending questions in your brain that's in a race to find the reason or the place from deep on to outer space so that the truth of any case can be unfurled in the real world? Science in the real world. Hi, I'm Kirsten. Welcome to Real World Science. Everything on Earth is part of an ecosystem, and you're a very important part of your ecosystem. Stay tuned to learn more about the exciting worlds that exist all around us. What is an ecosystem? So exactly what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is a system formed by the interaction of a community of organisms with their physical environment. Let me see if I can make this a little clearer. Take this pond for example. Everything you see here, the water, the ground, the plants and animals living in and near the water is an ecosystem. The living things and their non-living environment are working together and helping to maintain each other. When you have a relationship where things work together and depend on each other to exist, it's called symbiosis. So a pond is an ecosystem. But what about if we took a drop of pond water and put it in a dish? Well, this is an ecosystem too, only much smaller. There's still an environment, the water, and living organisms inside too, each working together to help maintain the other. So if an ecosystem can be as small as a drop of water, we can't possibly cover all the ecosystems in the world during this program, but we can cover some of the major ecosystems on Earth, each with unique environments and living organisms. These areas are called biomes. By definition, a biome is a major regional or global living community characterized by the dominant organisms and the climate. The Arctic Tundra In this program, we are going to cover seven major biomes found on Earth. Let's begin with a biome we call the Arctic Tundra. When you hear the word Arctic, you probably think of something cold. Well, you're right on track. The Arctic tundra is definitely cold, with temperatures reaching almost negative 51 degrees Celsius during the winter. Even in the warmest months, the temperature rarely goes above 10 degrees Celsius. Because the temperatures are so cold, the subsoil of the Arctic tundra remains frozen all the time. This permanently frozen ground is called permafrost. The Arctic tundra has a mostly dry climate and sees between 30 to 50 centimeters of rainfall annually. During summer, it gets just warm enough for a thin layer of topsoil to thaw and pools of water to form, attracting insects and some of those insects become a feast for hungry migrant birds that venture into the area during that time of year. Throughout the rest of the year, however, the climate is extremely dry and cold. So the plants and animals that live there have special characteristics that help them survive in the environment. For instance, many of the animals that live in the tundra have very thick fur, like polar bears, and you won't see trees in this area. They just can't adapt to the harsh conditions. So small shrubs and lichens are the dominant plants here. The Arctic tundra is the Earth's coldest biome and can be found mostly in the northern parts of the world, near the Arctic Ocean, and include lands in Europe, Asia, and North America.
forest biomes. Just south of the Arctic tundra, you can find a very different biome called the coniferous forest. The coniferous forest biome stretches across Alaska, the top of North America, and Eurasia. What characteristics comprise this biome? Well, for one thing, you'll find plenty of trees here. The coniferous forest consists of cone-bearing trees with needles like spruce, hemlock, and firs. These trees don't have leaves that fall off and decay, so the soil in the coniferous forest is not very fertile. But the coniferous trees grow well here and are suited to the cold climate of this area, which has temperatures ranging from negative 55 degrees Celsius in the winter and up to 20 degrees Celsius in the summer. And this area averages between 30 to 85 centimeters of rainfall annually. Some animals that can be found in this biome are the moose, rabbit, and owl. There's another biome that has lots of trees too. It's called the deciduous forest. The deciduous forest regions exist in many places, including Eastern North America, Europe, and Eastern Asia. What makes this forest so different? Well, it has mostly deciduous trees, trees that lose their leaves during the autumn season. The decaying leaves make the soil very fertile, and as a result, this biome can support all different kinds of plants and animals. The climate here changes, and the forest experiences all four seasons, summer, autumn, winter, spring. The deciduous forest has an average temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, and rainfalls at an average of 75 to 150 centimeters annually. So you can find a wide range of animals that live in this biome. Deer, squirrels, rabbits, chipmunks, and even people. Because the soil is so fertile, many people have rid areas of the deciduous forest to create homes and farms there. Desert Biomes Let's move on to a biome where it's difficult for life to survive, the desert. Scientists estimate that about one-fifth of land is a desert, and different types of deserts can be found on virtually every continent except Europe. This biome can support very little life because of the lack of water. Average rainfall in the desert is less than 25 centimeters per year. Temperatures range from about 35 degrees Celsius during the day to 10 degrees Celsius at night. When you think of the desert, you might think of a very hot, dry place, but there are actually different types of deserts with different climates. One kind is hot and dry. An example of a hot, dry desert is also the world's largest desert, the Sahara in northern Africa. It stretches across almost 9.1 million square kilometers. Another kind of desert is cold and dry, like the Gobi Desert in northern China. This desert stretches across almost 1.2 million square kilometers. Each type of desert has its own plants and animals, all of which have adapted to low moisture conditions. In the cold, dry desert, plant life is scarce, and so are the animals. In the hot desert, you can find many different cactus species, and some other types of plants. Few animals are equipped to survive here, but there are a variety of reptiles including snakes and lizards. 
And let's not forget the camel. It can survive in these dry conditions by storing water producing fat in its hump. Ready to move on to another region? Here we go! Grassland Biomes This biome is called the grasslands and it's full of, you guessed it, grass. Grasslands can be found on virtually every continent. It's estimated that almost one quarter of land is grasslands. And there are different kinds of grasslands, each of which see an average of 25 to 75 centimeters of rainfall annually. Temperatures in the savanna, which is the hot tropical grassland found in Africa, very little and average about 20 degrees Celsius. There, you'll find mostly dry, grassy fields and animals like giraffes and zebras. There are temperate grasslands too, like the ones found in North America, which have a varying climate with temperatures ranging from 38 degrees Celsius in the summer to zero degrees Celsius in the winter. These grasslands are often called prairies and are home to animals like buffaloes and prairie dogs. In many places in North America and Africa, grasslands have been turned into farms, making it less likely for large wild animals like bison to live there. The nutrient-rich soil is great for raising crops and feeding animals. So much of the grasslands are used for food that the area in the United States is often called the breadbasket of America. The Aquatic Biome Moving on from the rolling hills of the grasslands, we come to a biome that covers approximately 75% of the Earth's surface the aquatic biome. This biome can be separated into two basic regions, marine and freshwater. Marine regions include bodies of salt water, such as oceans, and some lakes. Marine regions support all kinds of animals, including sharks, fish, and seahorses, as well as crustaceans, and mammals like dolphins. Seaweed makes up a large portion of the marine plant life. Now, fresh water regions are made up of fresh water, not salt water, and includes ponds, lakes, streams, rivers, and wetlands. The various freshwater regions are home to many different types of animals, like fish, beavers, and ducks. And different kinds of plants can be found in the different freshwater regions. Temperatures can vary widely among the aquatic biome regions depending on location. But generally, these areas tend to be more humid and have a cooler air temperature than terrestrial biomes. Rainforest Biomes That brings us to the last major biome we're going to discuss. And it's one of the most interesting. It's called the rainforest and it is home to almost half of all the world's plant and animal species. There are two basic types of rainforests, tropical and temperate. Tropical rainforests can be found in Asia, Africa, South America, Central America, and many islands, many near the equator. Now, the largest temperate rainforests can be found on the Pacific coast. Tropical rainforests can get up to 400 centimeters of rain annually, so as you can imagine, they are pretty wet. In fact, they experience almost constant rainfall. And the average temperature ranges from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius with little change. 
there are countless species of trees and vegetation, all of which grow very tall, very dense, and very green. Some animals that can be found in the tropical rainforest are snakes, frogs, and my favorite, monkeys. Like the tropical rainforests, temperate rainforests tend to be very wet, but their climate is a little cooler. Temperate rainforests receive up to 250 centimeters of rainfall annually. Did you know that each second, an area of the rainforest that's almost the size of a football field is destroyed? You can help save the rainforest every day by doing simple things like recycling. When you recycle aluminum cans, for instance, you help to decrease the need for mining in rainforests. We've talked a lot about different parts of the world that are homes to many different biomes, but you don't have to travel across the world to observe a biome or an ecosystem. That's because ecosystems are all around us. Whether you are trekking through the rainforest, swimming in the ocean, or sitting in your backyard, you can observe ecosystems every day. Simply take a look around to see how ecosystems affect your life and how you affect an ecosystem in the real world.